LDL cholesterol plays a key role in the onset of atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is the name for the buildup of plaque on the inside of an artery. Cholesterol plays a crucial role in the development of atherosclerosis. First, let us review the different types of cholesterol. Cholesterol can be categorized as high-density lipoprotein, or HDL, low-density lipoprotein, or LDL, and very low-density lipoprotein, or VLDL. LDL cholesterol plays the most important role in the development of atherosclerosis. In contrast, HDL cholesterol can actually help prevent atherosclerosis. The topic of HDL in prevention of atherosclerosis will be discussed later in this video. LDL is so fundamental in the formation of atherosclerosis because of a protein called apolipoprotein B. Apolipoprotein B, or ApoB, is a structural protein that surrounds LDL cholesterol and other cholesterol-rich lipoproteins. The first step in atherosclerosis is the accumulation of ApoB-containing lipoproteins at the site of a damaged blood vessel wall. The reason ApoB lipoproteins are able to accumulate at the site of the damaged blood vessel wall is because ApoB can loosely bind to receptors on the cell membranes of cells found in the intima of the blood vessel. This loose binding of ApoB to cells of the tunica intima initiates the buildup of cholesterol-rich lipoproteins. After accumulating in the intima, LDL cholesterol is exposed to free radicals, such as reactive oxygen species, and the LDL becomes oxidized, abbreviated OxLDL. It is OxLDL that is taken up by cells and leads to the development of an atherosclerotic lesion. While it is OxLDL that forms the atherosclerotic lesion, the lesion never would have formed without LDL being present in the intima to become oxidized. Number 2. Inflammation is a main contributor to atherosclerosis. The site where the plaque is accumulating is known as the lesion. Inflammation induces the formation and growth of the atherosclerotic lesion. To find out more about inflammation, see the video on inflammation on this channel. The key in understanding how the immune system is involved in plaque buildup lies in the fact that LDL cholesterol can become oxidized when it reaches the intima. LDL cholesterol is normally taken into cells through an LDL cholesterol receptor. However, after LDL cholesterol is oxidized, it becomes immunogenic, meaning the immune system responds to it as if it were foreign material that needs to be contained by the immune system. Therefore, when LDL cholesterol becomes OxLDL, it will not enter cells through the LDL receptor, but through the scavenger receptor, which is the receptor through which foreign material can be engulfed by cells of the immune system. Specifically macrophages, which ingest foreign material for destruction through phagocytosis, are able to engulf OxLDL. However, unlike what occurs in the usual immune response, when macrophages phagocytose OxLDL, the OxLDL is broken down into smaller lipid particles that are inserted in the cell membrane and accumulate inside the cell. This accumulation of lipids inside the cell and cell membrane induces a change in the macrophage, turning the macrophage into a foam cell. The foam cells are largely what an atherosclerotic lesion consists of. While a lesion is initially induced by a buildup of LDL cholesterol, the LDL cholesterol is oxidized and phagocytosed, transforming the macrophages into foam cells. It is the foam cells that are full of lipid particles that are found inside an atherosclerotic lesion. In order to understand how the lesion is able to grow, it is important to remember that OxLDL is immunogenic, and the foam cells that were once macrophages can still secrete chemical messengers of the immune system. These chemical messengers attract macrophages and other immune cells to aid in ridding the lesion site of OxLDL. However, instead of getting rid of the OxLDL, the macrophages transition into foam cells and the fatty lesion grows and grows as more and more of an inflammation response is signaled by the foam cells. Further contributing to the growth of the lesion is that it is also possible for OxLDL to initiate a phenotypic switch in the smooth muscle cells of the artery. A phenotypic switch is when a cell of one tissue type begins to express genes of a different tissue type. After the phenotypic switch, smooth muscle cells are able to perform phagocytosis of the OxLDL and become foam cells themselves. Thus, inflammation and production of foam cells leads to growth of the atherosclerotic lesion. The longer the inflammation persists, the larger the lesion will grow to be. Number 3. Atherosclerosis is most dangerous when lesions rupture. When an atherosclerotic lesion ruptures, 
the contents of the lesion spill out into the blood vessel. This can lead to a sudden burst of the contents of the lesion into the bloodstream of the vessel. Fragments of dead foam cells or components of proteins and lipids can all be suddenly released into circulation when a lesion ruptures. When these components are released into the blood from the ruptured lesion, they begin to interact with each other as well as the wall of the blood vessel and a thrombus begins to form. A thrombus is a clot that is formed when these molecules that were once inside the lesion begin to collide with each other in the lumen of the blood vessel. As the thrombus increases in size, it can damage the vessel wall and block blood flow through the blood vessel. When a blood vessel cannot provide an adequate supply of oxygen due to a blockage in blood flow, it is called ischemia. Ischemia can lead to severe cardiovascular trauma and death. One example of this is coronary artery disease. When the heart pumps blood, it is only transporting the blood. The cells of the myocardium, the muscular layer of the heart, are not receiving any nutrients from the blood passing through its four chambers. Rather, the blood must be pumped through the arteries of the heart, known as coronary arteries. It is the coronary arteries that deliver the blood that cells of the heart rely on to live. When an atherosclerotic lesion forms in the coronary arteries, the lesion reduces blood flow as it grows into the lumen of the blood vessel. When the lesion bursts, the resulting thrombus can entirely cut off blood flow through the coronary arteries. It is possible the cells of the heart do not receive enough blood to live due to the thrombus, and the cells of the heart begin to die, leading to myocardial infarction, also known as heart attack. If an ischemic thrombus forms from a burst atherosclerotic lesion in an artery in the brain, the blockage can lead to an ischemic stroke and brain tissue dies due to a lack of adequate blood flow. Atherosclerosis can also lead to peripheral artery disease. If a lesion forms or ruptures in the arteries of the lower extremities, such as in the calves, it is possible that not enough blood will be able to flow to support exercise or even walking. Individuals suffering from peripheral artery disease often experience severe pain, sometimes only from walking, as there is not enough blood flow through the legs to support physical activity due to the ischemia from the ruptured lesion. Number 4. Prevention and Treatment of Atherosclerosis Chronic inflammation is linked to atherosclerotic plaque buildup. Therefore, suppressing inflammation can help prevent and treat atherosclerosis. Reducing inflammation can lead to fewer macrophages arriving at the lesion site. Fewer macrophages arriving at the lesion site will result in fewer foam cells being formed. Furthermore, inflammation contributes to the weakening and eventual rupture of the lesion. Keeping inflammation down can prevent the weakening of the lesion, but also enhance the strength of the lesion, preventing the rupture of the lesion. For example, T regulatory cells are cells of the immune system that suppress the immune system to protect the body from an overly aggressive immune response. If T regulatory cells accumulate in a lesion, the T regulatory cells can secrete chemical messengers that inhibit inflammation, and some of these chemical messengers can act as growth factors for healthy smooth muscle in the vessel wall. By increasing the amount of healthy smooth muscle at the site of the lesion, the lesion is more tightly contained and rupture is unlikely. HDL cholesterol also plays an important role in prevention and treatment of atherosclerosis. HDL cholesterol can regulate the amount of LDL cholesterol by having it transported to the liver where it is degraded. Furthermore, HDL cholesterol can actually lead to macrophages and foam cells removing LDL cholesterol from their cytoplasm and into the lesion site. When the LDL has been transported out of the macrophages and foam cells and is free in the lesion site, HDL can initiate the transport of LDL cholesterol to the liver for destruction. Lastly, HDL cholesterol can have an anti-inflammatory result when encountering macrophages and foam cells. When HDL is uptaken by macrophages and foam cells, HDL cholesterol can inhibit the production of chemical messengers that signal inflammation, and HDL cholesterol can weaken the ability of the endothelium to transport cells involved in inflammation into the site of the atherosclerotic lesion. Thus. HDL cholesterol is an important tool in both prevention and treatment of atherosclerosis. It is important to point out, however, that HDL cholesterol can take on more than one form, and some forms of HDL cholesterol seem more beneficial than others in preventing atherosclerosis. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to our channel for the latest video on the science of human physiology.